done. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Marilyn London, membership chairman and board member of the Friends of the Sterling Road Library. And I would like to welcome you all tonight to another one of our fabulous foreign films with Shelley. And um, I'm just going to go over a couple of quick things. But first of all, I see that some of the people in the gallery are not muted. Please mute your thank you. <laughs> I know, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, <Jack. laughs> So please mute because usually I forget. So I, I thank you for that. And at the end, when Shelly takes uh, questions, please unmute and please bombard him with all your comments and your questions. This way it's a win-win-win situation. Um, for those of us who are friends of the library and I see almost most of us are, Thank you, and it's because of you that we are all here tonight. If you are not yet, please check us out at www.sterlingfriends.org and join us so that we can continue working with all of the fabulous uh, people who, who lecture to us, like Shelley and like everybody else, who we are able to um, join us and uh it's because of you that we're able to do this so i thank you and i thank those of you who are going to become friends to continue making this happen um i hope you're all getting your newsletters i hope you're all getting our emails if you're not please contact me or put it something in the in the in the chat or and i will get in touch with you so that we could fix whatever problem that it, there is uh, just very briefly remember that for the rest of this month, the important, well, the, every program is important, whether it's from the library or the friends, but make sure that you know that A, the library is going to be closed on Juneteenth on Monday. So don't go to the library. On um, Tuesday is a very busy day. We have Miriam's short story and it is Hellion. It was back and forth. It's the original. So just, right, Jackie? So just make sure that you are uh, reading that one for Miriam and she switched. So she's on the 20th. The only thing that's new and not a regular for us that I want you to know is that we have Elliot Levine, who is an attorney out of state. I'm not sure where he's from. Joyce will know. And he's going to uh, lecture us on insanity defense and difficulty with jury acceptance. What's going on in Florida? You might want to find out what's going on with jury acceptance. It might be very timely for us. In any case, that will be Tuesday night. And I hope that um, you all um, support us and support Elliot. And we'll see. And if you like it, let us know. And maybe we can encourage him to keep lecturing to us. This is like a once. And, and we'll try it out. So we would love your comments on that. Um, again, the next important thing is um, next Monday, the movie matinee is gonna be spoiler alert with Candy. Um, and on Tuesday will be Linda's book club, which will be her hidden genius. And um, that will be on the 27th, along with Emmanuel Abramowitz that night. Tuesdays are our crazy nights, it seems. As well as that, everybody seems to love Ageless Grace and Chair Yoga. So um, glad you're all taking care of that also. In addition to that, there's only one more thing I want to let you know. And I'm not going to share my screen, but I will tell you this, that Sterling Road is 20 years old on um, this year. And we are having a big birthday bash Sunday, July 9th check your newsletter, check your emails, join us to say happy birthday to, um, to the Sterling Road Library. So you've had enough of me and you came to listen to Shelly. So Shelly, it's all yours. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here. Thank you, Marilyn. Hi, everyone. If it's Thursday, it must be Wednesday. I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you all for coming and and uh, adjusting to the schedule for the summer. It's nice to see all of you. Uh, I hope your summer is going well. And uh, <clears throat> tonight's film, Pezeka, Pezeka, 
another film that deals with food, but from a different country and a whole different attitude about uh, the protagonist. Uh, it is from Morocco. Uh, it was it was put together in France. The the director is French. His name is Jean Philippe Gaulle, and he is a writer, director, and editor. Uh, he was he really put this together himself. Uh, he was before this, he uh, directed opera. Uh, he did Rossini's The Barber of Seville and uh, Leon Cavallo's Pagliacci. Pagliacci. Anyway, when he, he did this, he was inspired to do this because it is a story about, as he puts it, a story of destiny. Destiny, a lighthearted and inspiring coming of age tale involving memory, identity, a realistic look at immigration, transmission, and a passion for cooking, a passion for cooking. Uh, it's the, it, it begins as a chronicle of a village. You know, when the film opens, we get all these beautiful shots of uh, the Tzeka area, and we see little Elias uh, and, uh, you know, the simple daily rhythms of life. They really, they really outweigh, there's no real dramatic uh, narration yet. We're really being introduced to the village. And I like the way he brings us into this place. Uh, it takes its time sketching out the environment through his eyes, his eyes. Growing up in the early 2000s, it was a period that was uh, otherwise known with tragic shipwrecks of North Africans attempting to migrate to Europe through the Strait of Gibraltar, uh, one of which took his brother's life, uh, as we learned during the film. Uh, Morocco is a Francophone country, uh, utilizing the French language quite a bit because it was a colony. It was a French protectorate until 1956. Interestingly, uh, the country has never seen armed conflict. It's interesting that Morocco has never been involved in armed conflict uh, that has happened within their borders, except at times when they were occupied, except when they were occupied. Uh, we are introduced to Elias. He's a little boy in the care of his grandmother and his older brother, Marwan. Uh, he learns the traditional and some secret recipes from his grandmother. And he memorizes the French. I love how we see him memorizing the French recipes by constantly repeating them over and over again. They are his storybook at night. Uh, they are his fairy tales. They are his dreams uh, because he's reading this book of the great chefs. We don't know what befell his parents. We really don't learn but he has a very good relationship with his grandmother and his brother and his brother at the time. He's totally fixated on these recipes to the point, as I said, of reciting them. Uh, and then finally, the film transitions to him as a young man, as he tends to his chores and still cares for his grandmother. We learn his brother has died in the sea while trying to get to France. Uh, and he is like a walking cookbook at this point in time, still reciting the recipes, still learning from the books and TV, and still working for Youssef where he cooks in the back. He has the, the hot plate and he's busy working. And, and Youssef is a wonderful character. Uh, he's a cranky, he's cranky, but he's kind hearted uh, as the owner of the small general store and cafe. Uh, you know, it lends itself to the color of the film, you know, being this small village. There's no city in sight. These are people that depend on each other. Yusuf does not indulge, certainly, in, in Ilias' desire uh, to create great French cuisine. You know, why do you bother with this stuff? But he does not squash it entirely. Uh, I love it when they go to the market. And he refuses, he refuses to buy the lamb cutlet for Elias. He said, what do you need? But he reminds him, and he reminds him to only speak French. So he will one day make the trip there. Elias says to him, you got to speak French because he's going to France. We are exposed to the locals at Youssef's Cafe. 
Uh, the men sit around drinking coffee, eating and playing games, playing backhand and other games while Elias watches Joel Rubichon on TV, the great chef Joel Rubichon. Uh, and and he's, he is now his, his god. Uh, he also runs in to Salma. We meet Salma, a rebellious cousin from France who was sent to Zeka to get away from any of her problems in France. Obviously, you know, she's growing, going through her own growing pains and she's been sent to the village, which she deals with in disdain. She really doesn't want to be there. Uh, this is the girl from the big city. Uh, as we see, destiny begin to present itself when Julian Blanc shows up, another famous TV chef uh, who stops to eat at Yusef's. And despite the fact that all he is can prepare is couscous, he also manages to make a knockout dessert. I love the way he prepares that dessert. You know, he, he's, he's got to do something to get his attention. And Blanc is impressed. He loves the dessert. He tastes the dessert. He says, where did this come from? He invites him to visit his restaurant in Paris if he ever gets there, if he ever gets there. Uh, you know, usually it's natural he would, never figuring he'd ever show up. Uh, and then developing a relationship with Salma, it ends abruptly when he pre prepares that exquisite meal to impress her. And she also abruptly goes back to France. Uh, you know, at first they confide in each other and then finally, and then all of a sudden she disappears again. Uh, growing frustrated, he gets caught trying to rob Youssef. And here's the dramatic turning point in the film when he takes the money. Uh, but Youssef uh, gets angry with him, but he also understands him. He's like a father to him. He doesn't want to, you know, cast him off. And finally, when he talks to, he talks to Elias's grandmother and convinces her to let him go. You know, he convinces her to let him go, paying his way and arranging his papers. He does have people looking over him. As I said, you know, this is a small village. It's not a big city. These people really are, are connected to each other in so many different ways. The next part of the film stands in contrast to the beauty that we saw in the first half in Morocco. You know, we've gone from this beautiful countryside um, and now we're in Paris. Elias is living in a hovel uh, and uh, he, you know, he's cooking on a small hot plate and he's struggling to get work. He's struggling to get work. You know, one of the great things about the film is you don't know what's going to happen next. You just, you know, the film is so simple or seemingly simple, but it's really complex because now we're dealing with immigration. It's not just dealing with Elias' story as wanting to be a chef, but we're dealing with a young man who's emigrating to another country, literally. And uh, he's one of countless numbers now trying to get work uh, to pay his way, you know, and, and uh, he gets caught up in, in this spiral of clandestine immigration, if you will, manage, managing to survive through his friendship with Suleiman. It's, it's wonderful how they meet when they hide, they're hiding under the car and the two of them form a bond. The two of them form a bond. Uh, and, uh, you know, Suleiman is, is also an emigrate from Africa, from Senegal. So they're both in a sense from Africa. Uh, and Suleiman appreciates Elias and comforts him after he runs into Salma. If you remember, he runs into her on the street. She, she reads him the riot act again. She says, I don't know what you were thinking. You know, tells him that his grandmother is sick. Uh, at that point, he, he meets uh, a young woman, if you remember, and things are looking up for him, you know, when they go to that cafe. Uh, but a setback forces him to ask uh, Suleiman to put him up. Refusing to take money from him, Elias pays him back with a sumptuous meal. I love their daughter. She's so cute, you know, a little precocious kid. Uh, and, and he's preparing that wonderful meal uh, for them. Uh, and there's a beautiful moment of transmission when Elias teaches little Neeline how to mix the couscous the way his grandmother taught him. 
you know, that's the transmission that she's passed on to him. And he's, he's, you know, he, it's ingrained in him now, literally, and he's passing it on to her. Ultimately, he does go to meet with Julian Blanc, as we see, uh, but he doesn't get a job offer. You know, you figure the kid comes in and he says, I really, I really don't have anything for you. And he says, but, you know, let's sit down, have a conversation. And we see the two of them talking and we don't know what he could possibly be coming up with. But he comes up with another idea. And then the next thing you know, we see he and Suleiman are on their way to success, are on their way to success. They have that pop up restaurant out on the street. Uh, and he's making his food, and Suleiman is there working as his partner. It's terrific. I mean, these are two, these are an example of two people who were starting with nothing in France, and they are beginning their road uh, to becoming assimilated into this country. Uh, it's interesting that although the director presents a variety, I mean, there's a variety of possibilities in the way this film could go. Uh, and we suspect the film will follow uh, some of some of the ones we're thinking of. Uh, we think, OK, Elias and Salma will get together. Wrong. You know, don't cross that box. Uh, Elias attaining success in Paris, you know, that he'll get a job in the restaurant and he's a big success. Well, he does wind up on TV, if you remember, uh, which which really helps him out. Uh, you know, that's, uh, and, and so we, we can tick off that box. Elias getting into fusion cooking with his street stall, which offers a metaphor itself for migration. It's a metaphor itself for migration. Uh, Jean-Philippe Go, uh, the director, dismisses all of these as artifice. And he ends it on a grace note. When he returns to the village, to pay respects at his grandmother's grave. Uh, and at that point, he reunites with Yusef. And Yusef is the proud father. You know, he is the proud, he, he sees his adopted son as being a success. You know, Tezeka is thereby all the more powerful as a portrait of this South to North migration in the 21st century. You know, we see so many stories that are, are can be depressing today uh, of the migration. I mean, we saw Terra Firma, uh, the Italian film, and, you know, how devastating it is for these people to get across the waters, and most of them drown. Uh, all the deep hope and loss are here, as well as the small life-saving grace that immigrants can show toward one another that they can show toward one another because they are in it together. Uh, the cinematography contrasts the beauty of the Moroccan countryside with the streets of Paris. Uh, you know, green, lovely, idyllic, uh, to, you know, dark, sometimes dirty, bustling, busy, a city of far from the tourist sites we're used to. You notice this doesn't deal with the tourist sites. This gives you the, the uh, backside of Paris, if you will. Uh, the film maintains simple shot compositions. There's nothing fancy with the camera work. It's mostly all dead on, uh, allowing us to focus on the character and the dialogue. It allows us to really pay attention to this young man's journey. And each character has a distinctive voice in the film. And they all feel fully formed from, you know, Elias, his grandmother, uh, Youssef, Suleiman and his family, uh, they're all really fully formed. Every one of their motivations are all re well reasoned out and balanced by their desires and their relationship to those around them. You know, Suleiman is responsible to his family. Uh, you know, when they have the talk out on the terrace and, and they tell each other their story, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's touching because they're connecting. They're connecting in this world. Uh, the various forms of music I thought were interesting in the film, from the very traditional to the operatic, 
Uh, we hear arias from Carmen during the film and the music from Pagliacci. They each lend their own little taste to the story. Uh, Mari Belemli, Mari Belemli, who plays Elias, uh, he's the young man who plays Elias. He had small roles, very small roles in Moroccan TV and uh, before starring in Tezeka. He carries the movie, appearing in just about every scene. Uh, and he creates an empathy. You know, we feel for this kid. He's smiling, he's always upbeat. Uh, you know, that puts us, it puts us in his corner. And when things turn serious and painful for his character, <clears throat> excuse me, he manages to deliver the right notes of frustration and solemnity. He, he, we see all these shades, these dimensions of this young man. Adam Diop is the, the actor who plays Suleiman, provides another likable character uh, in the film, as does, I said, Youssef, who is played, Youssef is played by Abbas Zamani, who has been a character actor in French films for almost 40 years. Uh, he's been acting in TV and film for 40 years. Uh, Ridad Ilam, who has been a featured player since 2008, expresses, you know, she expresses a certain reality and believability as Salma. First with her sarcasm as being sent to Tezeka, her wisecracks, and then being flirtatious, and then shutting down when she feels things might be going too far between her and Elias. And finally being honest when she runs into him in Paris. You know, uh, Tezeka has a lot to say about the passion that fuels people, uh, the way society treats immigrants and how those two elements interrelate. Uh, and the realistic characterizations, the exquisite dialogue in the film and the fine acting easily overcome all the obstacles, not to mention the food itself. Uh, it's, you know, it is a really, really wonderful little gem of a film. And I'm glad you all got to see it. Uh, this is about the fifth time I'm seeing it. And each time I love it. Uh, it's like revisiting uh, a friend. That's the way I look at most of these films, but this one too. It's another an, another lovely little film, and I'm glad you all got to see it. So now I will open up uh, the room, and I'd like to hear your comments on the film. So just raise your hands, and I'll be glad to call on you. And, and don't forget to unmute yourself. Uh, Linda, go right ahead. Well, forgive me if my, my picture is going around. I couldn't get you today on my computer. I'm on a on my phone. <laughs> In any case, I thought that the movie was fabulous because it was full of feelings. The it, it really got to your heart. And it shows how it, it really takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, to get everyone together. And I thought it was a beautiful movie. And I liked it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, even even in times of trouble, I mean, when he steals the money, you're sitting there going, no, you know, what are you <laughs> doing? You know, what's going to happen to him now? And you said, but the love of angry. that man that yes. was really a father. Yes, he was. He wanted him to succeed. He was helping him along. Yeah. You, you know, you got the feeling he was he was he was sort of raising him to take over his business. But when he saw his passion and he saw what he wanted to do, you know, and, and also after losing his brother, I think Yusuf didn't want to see him do that, uh, you know, try to get there on his own, uh, which would be dangerous. So, you know, and, and that's why with that whole expression you're using, you know, it takes a village, you know, to prevent bad things from happening, not just to create the good, right. not just right. to create the good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Come on. I know some of you have something to say. I'm waiting. Oh, Jackie. Okay. <laughs> you, you knew we'd have something to say. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we really liked it as I sit here in my little apron. I thought it was I thought it was darker than what a lot of people were talking about because there are so many elements in it. It's like we absolutely loved Yusef, 
But it was interesting how he contrasted the grandmother. I agree, he really seemed to want the boy to take over his business, but he was willing to let him go and to help him. And I thought that was really cute. Whereas the grandmother had a real problem with that. I thought the cinematography was terrific. And I thought it was very interesting to contrast the beauty of Morocco to Paris. I, I thought that was quite, quite interesting. And I also liked how they all kind of stayed together, the immigrants. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's funny. And, and thanks again for bringing that up, the contrast, because usually you see a film where the emigre is coming from, you know, a, an oppressive situation that they have to get out of, you know, whether it be war, economics or whatever. I mean, he certainly didn't have to leave if he didn't want to. Uh, he was living a nice little life there, but he, he, his mind was set. He was ambitious and he wanted the opportunity to prove himself. Uh, so it really didn't follow what most films do, which is refreshing, which is refreshing uh to watch it that way so thank you jackie uh ron yeah one of the uh, i think most impressive aspects of the film to me is the immigrant's experience elias gets to paris and then pretty much divorces himself from life at home even after his friend tells him his grandmother's not well it's a really long time before he's able to call back and find out what's going on, even though his friend Suleiman's telling him, here, here's a phone, go call somebody, find out what's going on. And then when he finally calls, he finds out that his grandmother had passed, and then he makes the trip back. So that must strikes me as probably a most significant immigrant experience of people around the world who are forced to immigrate but have to leave people behind. And then at some point, how do they reunite or maintain some continuity of uh, contact? Yeah, no, it's, 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 again, you know, it's interesting you bring that up because, you know, it's, it's you use the expression they have to leave people behind. You know, in most cases, yes. I mean, they, they, they're forced to leave them behind. Here, he's not so much forced, as and he is single-minded. I mean, he he's mm -hmm. focused. He knows what he wants to do and what he wants to become, and that you know becomes all-encompassing for him, uh, which is why he's like shutting everything else out and doesn't realize you know he does have people back there that he has to be in contact with, and finally does you know, and it is too late uh, for with his, where his grandmother is concerned, but he's coming from a place of love. He's not coming from a place of oppression or repression or, or, you know, the problems, which is what makes the film so interesting, but yet he's still an emigre, regardless of all of that, mm -hmm. he's still an emigre in Paris. You know, he's, it's, it's, he's equalized in a sense. And he's still, you know, he's still, you know, whereas Suleiman probably had to leave Senegal. And, you know, and so, you know, his story is a little different. And, and you know, we see these different stories. So, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting, you know, dynamic when you think about it. It is, it is a lot more complex than we, than, than we think of just watching the film. So thank you, Ron. Thank mm. you. Marilyn. Um, I really love this film, and um, you know, it's it was great for for foodies, and I I really thought that it, the way they did it is this bringing it up to snuff. In other words, they started with Joel Robichon, who's like the likes of Paul Bocuse and Alain Ducasse, and right. all the old classical, and brought it right up to today with the television shows where they are star. And I, I love the way they did that. And it was just very subtle how he won. But what I laughed was when I saw this, I missed something. When um, Julianne Blanc went into the kitchen, where he was in in the, in uh, Tzika or whatever, it's called, and he was mixing the the broth, and he tasted <laughs> it, and the spoon went right back into the thing, and it was very French because here, with you know the way we think here, it would, be, it would be a guess, but once or twice he tasted, trying to find out what the missing 
you know, what was the ingredient when yeah. he couldn't figure. And then right back, he puts it the, the ladle <laughs> right back in. I thought that was so French and so cute. So yes. I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you for choosing it. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Dora? Dora, you have Dora, to you're on mute. Unmute. I'm sorry. Um, I, I really love the movie and it makes you hungry also. But <laughs> what I like about the character is that he knew his potential. And that's like you mentioned that, that he was set to, to succeed no matter what. I mean, he left his grandmother where he, lo he loves her very much. And also when he knew that she was sick, she didn't go back, he didn't go back, he hesitated, but he knew that he had to stay. Maybe he thought, well, I cannot do anything about her health and I'll deal with that later. And, but he had to succeed in Paris because he knew that he was great, that he was in the, in the way to being a success as a, as a chef. So I, I, I thought that about that. And the story is different from Suleiman because Suleiman, I understand, left his family. He mm -hmm. left the family in Africa and, and then he has another family here in Paris, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is very common, is, is something very common in, in, in the immigrants because he's not going back. If he goes back, he, that's it. He wants a, he wants a better life, so he has to sacrifice the family that he has back home. But hmm. but um, this character was, and he he played it so nicely. I, he was so good. Yes, I liked it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. Terrific. Uh, Mel, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marilyn. Okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, I love the honesty in the film and yeah. it, the sensitivity about this young boy not going back. He felt guilty. He, he was so, so um, conflicted. But at the point that he does make the phone call, he had more strength. And the other scene that I loved was that little love scene between the two teenagers. But she wanted him to be released because she knew she was much tougher than him. And she knew that the sweetness, and she, she, she didn't want to ruin that sweetness. So she sacrificed herself. So she really did like him. And she went back to being most probably an extremely mean, tough young woman. And I thought that each portrayal was done so well. And I, it, it took me a while to get into the film. At the beginning, I thought it was more simplistic. And then suddenly it just developed. So I also thank you so much for it. Yeah, and and you you know it's it's he he comes by I think you know yes it was simple to begin because he watched this little boy and he's reciting the recipes and everything else, but you realize that all of this contributed to what he became. I mean, this is you know what his grandmother was showing him with in the kitchen with the, the preparing i love the way the way she prepares the couscous i mean it's it's uh, you wanted to sit down at the table i mean it was just amazing and he's learning this craft and so all this that we see at the beginning pays off at the end uh you know it's hard work it's hard work and, and it's his life's work which is what's interesting about it so thank you marilyn bonnie yeah, I just wanted to to comment on, you know, the fact that he didn't um, contact home or or go back home when he when he you know found out his grandmother was ill. I think that's probably probably common among many uh, immigrants because first of all, he doesn't want to contact home until he's succeeded. He doesn't want to mm -hmm. say that he's struggling, that he's you know just a day laborer or, or whatever. So I think I think wanting success before he contacts home was was probably one of the reasons that he didn't and had he gone back after he learned that his grandma was ill had he gone back then he would probably have had a very difficult time returning to france a second time maybe not even possible 
And, um, but I think with Suleiman, I think he gave him good perspective on how important it is to, to keep in touch with your family and loved ones. So yeah. that, you know, I thought that was, that was good. But I think, you know, later when he did go back, I think he had a little more freedom to travel at that point. Yeah. Absolutely. Good, good, good comments, because what you're saying, this is the reality and it's the reality of the film. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, you know, we don't have to suspend that much disbelief in this film. We really, we really can believe, you know, the path he's going through and what's happening. Uh, even the way uh, Chef Blanc winds up at the restaurant, you know, it was out of the way. They needed to stop, you know, and they just wanted to have a refreshment. And, and what a coincidence, you know, it's really, it shows you how coincidence works. You know, it is destiny, it was his destiny in a sense. And it was very well played in that aspect. Uh, but you're right, they don't want to admit, you know, you, you're, he's down in the dumps. The last thing he wants to admit is that he's not making it, he's not getting anywhere. And yes, he, if he came back, he might not get out again. So yes, there is that reality of the situation. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, Rachel. Okay, I loved the movie also. I thought it was fantastic. And something that uh, also, I, as a foodie and a person that loves food, food is love. And who we gather and eat with makes a difference. You saw that throughout the movie, like the gathering of like he doesn't have money to give the people that he's staying with. So he cooks for them and it is a sign of love and they get it. Not always do people get that, that, you know, that food can transport people when you sit at a table and just eat together. And so I, th I love the characters in the movie. Um, and I, I love his dilemma because he could not, I don't think his character could go back until he made it. His brother died doing this and he had to be a success. He had to prove to his grandmother that it was worthwhile doing. And if he went back because she was ill, she would know that, you know, she felt that it wasn't right. And I did love the scene where, where the shopkeeper that he was helping out and uh, the grandmother are sitting there. And it reminded me in the movie uh, Fiddler on the Roof, um, <laughs> where it, he has to talk his wife into the, uh, that, you know, it was an arranged marriage, but this is the right person. So here he is trying to talk the grandmother into this and she gets it finally. And I just loved it. I, I, I loved it. I, and I love food and my God, it made me so hungry for couscous. <laughs> <laughs> terrific, terrific. Thank you, Rachel. It's true though. Even the meal he prepares for Salma uh, is with love. I mean, he's expressing his love for her, but also his love for the food, uh, which comes through when she takes the first bite. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's you know, and you're figuring, okay, he's got her, and he doesn't, you know, it is, is the interesting part of all of this. Uh, it's the way it works out. So it's very interesting, very interesting. Uh, Jackie or Larry, you had something else? Well, I was going to say, going along with what Rachel said, I and gathering people and that food is love, just what you just said, it didn't work with Selma. She pushed him away. But with Suleiman and his family, it was a big deal when they invited him on the couch, even though he really didn't fit on the couch. It was a big <laughs> deal for them to include for them to include it. And I thought one thing that was very interesting with the movie is it pulls you in a direction and then it doesn't take you there. I mean, you wonder what's going to happen. It's like, I kept thinking he was going to end up getting on the TV program and become one of these top chefs in the contest, but he didn't. And then there was another point where he's watching that and he says something about him being a liar. So it makes you wonder all the way through what is actually happening. And yet really he has so much support in his life from the chef to, to Yusuf, to all of them. It was, it was very well done how you really weren't sure what was going to happen. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you, you just lead me to the idea, you know, sitting on the couch, it's, you know, the idea that they're all in it together. But it's also the multiculturalism, the multiculturalism of food, the multiculturalism of the people. You know, they, they, they each bring something to the table. Uh, and it's not just the food. They bring something to the table. They bring their past. They bring their heritage. Uh, and that's what makes, you know, makes us who we are, hopefully. Uh, it's when, when they're denied this kind of thing that we run into problems, that we run into problems. But it, 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 the film was very positive in that approach. And I think that's what makes it worthwhile. Thank you, Jackie. Anybody else out there have anything they'd like to add? Anybody? Oh, there are some things in the chat. There are two oh, in the chat. There are. Um, and Susan, I agree. French, especially yes, French Susan, man. food cuisine is was wonderful. Marrakesh was one of my favorites. Yes. And then there's yes. another comment also. Yeah, about the, his single-mindedness and yeah. uh, of, of a successful person is indicated by his, everything he did that built up to it. Yes, of course. Uh, Mel, you had something? Uh, I was interested in the transition between Morocco and Paris. All of a sudden, you see a bustling city coming from a very quiet town, and vice versa. When he goes back to see the family, you're in Paris, and all of a sudden, he shocks you without <coughs> knowing that you're back in Morocco. Now, years ago, or I should say in, movie, in American movies, uh, you see the plane, you see him getting on the plane and, and then going on. But uh, this is this is far different. Yes, yes, he, he returns. Uh, it's the idea that he can go back, uh, you know, and he goes back a success. Uh, and then eventually will probably, you know, return to Paris and be successful. But he'll keep he'll keep a connection with Youssef. Uh, so he's always connected. Uh, to his heritage, uh, it is it is a very you know a, a, a very well you know it, he the director reaches a nice point in the film of the fact that you don't have to you know if you come from a place that cares for you you will always care for them is basically what happens here uh, you know because he wasn't forced to leave he wanted to leave uh, and even though he did. And he faced hardship in Paris, overcomes, and now he can come back. And he he has he has both worlds in essence. Uh, he's accomplished. He's accomplished himself, uh, which is nice to see. Yeah. I was a little sad that the grandmother only had painted bricks on her grave. Uh, well, that's the simplicity. Yes. <laughs> Everybody had cement stone. Yeah, uh, Ed and Alice had a comment. Uh, Marilyn had a question for you. How did it come across in French? How was the, the translation, I guess? Well, quite honestly, my French is not what my own. My French is sort of not as great as it was because I've been here for a long time. So I could catch a lot of it, but I definitely need the subtitles for, I'd say, most of it. Some of it I could understand, but not enough. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I should go to one of those schools and, and learn my French again. Well, now that Ed and Alice outed you, yes, you need to go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see, I got another one in the chat. I enjoyed being part of it. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Same here. Uh, she's happy to be back. I'm happy to have you back. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have anything they say? Be, anything they want to say before we get into uh, the next film? Okay. So coming up uh, next is a film also from Morocco because this month we're in Morocco. Uh, the film. The film is entitled Adam. Adam. Adam, uh, and it is a very interesting story. It's a story of two women. The protagonists in this film are two women. It is a bit of a drama. Uh, also, also deals with food in a certain way. Uh, not not in the way the last certainly the last two have, but uh, Abla, 
the main protagonist in the film runs a modest local bakery from her home and this takes place in Casablanca where she lives alone with her eight year old daughter. Uh, their routine, we go through their routine of housework and homework. Uh, she's very connected with her little daughter and her education. Uh, and it's interrupted one day by a knock on the door. Uh, when a young woman named Sama, Samia arrives looking for a job and a roof over her head. Uh, and it, that's the beginning of our story. And the rest of it you will experience when you watch the film. Uh, but it is quite an interesting journey uh, that will uh, trans, uh, that it's again a film of transmission, but also a film of, of transference and a film where the characters will change, where we, we will see a change in character during the film and the motivations why. This is a film that reveals itself through the film. It doesn't hit us over the head, but the tale of these two women come through very strongly. And it's two very, it's two very strong tales of women in Morocco and what they go through uh, in a man's world, in a man's world. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it is subtle. It's a beautiful expression of sisterhood. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to hear what you have to think about it. So I will see you in two weeks for a dom. Uh, much, and uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's beautiful. The cinematography is gorgeous. The acting, especially. Uh, one of my favorite actresses is in it. And I will uh, tell you all about her when we meet again. So take care. Happy Father's Day, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we? Thank you very much, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. See you next and time. And have a good Juneteenth. Thank you. And, and, and Marilyn, you know, based <laughs> on what you said at the beginning about this lecture, you got about the uh, about the insanity, please. Unfortunately, we didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. <laughs>